This is Chris, Weka, Darren, and uh, I'm Josh. You may remember me from such movies as The Possum Whisper and uh, How to Build a Pallet Table. Breakfast of Champions. Up the Palmyra River. Currently in Westport. Commonly known as the arsehole of the West Coast. That could possibly be Greymouth as well. Wicker's just having one last bit with a spinning rod. Here we are with Heli Charter Caramere. If any of you guys out there want a wicked fly fishing experience or a hunting trip, come see this guy. This is Wayne. Is that right, Wayne? <laughs> He'll see you right. One of the best fly fishing areas in the country. Here we go. Josh, Robert, Robert. Simon, Tom, Tom. Scott, Scott. Yeah. Louis, yeah. what was it again? <laughs> Robert, <laughs> Scott, Louis, 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 yeah, nice. Oh, Henry. Henry, Matt, yeah, sweet, Mort, sweet, Matt and Mort, alright, right. awesome. TV there Henry. Oh well, this is Matt, yeah, yeah. Matt's the Chief Logistics Manager so uh, where are you from, Matt? Yeah, I'm from Nelson. Uh, most of the South Island boys get around, but the uh, main purpose of the trip is um, Henry White's stag. Stag down there. Oh, we're losing a good man this week, are we? Oh, it's been a couple of weeks. But he's always had a soft spot for the uh, National Park, eh? so we thought this is a good place to come and get away from the, uh, the babies and the cell phones and other things that distract you. And um, here we are, looking forward to a good trip down the river. Nice. So Henry, does your wife know that we've got a couple of strippers up here? Yeah, she, she's all about it, eh? You know, last weekend to bring it up and get, get it done. Sherry is scary, good on you mate. Looks like our strippers just turned up. Those bumblebees really like the colour blue for some reason. I guess it reminds them of a, a flower that they're meant to eat. Who knows? Maybe God just made it into their system that they're attracted to blue. Anyway, here we are up the Karamea River. It's bloody low. It's bloody windy. So today's going to be a long slog across flat water. And we've got about 12 k's of flat water with a couple of short, very bony, very shallow rapids to go through. Uh, we saw four deer on the way up here, middle of the day from the helicopter, which is quite good. And then the second flight saw two of those four deer that we saw. So fingers crossed we'll be able to smoke a deer on the way down to camp tonight. And I'll of course catch some fish and maybe an eel for tea. Pretty excited, uh, the crew looks really good. Awesome bunch of Kiwi lads. Four per boat, so we've got pretty good boat loads for these low flow conditions. And we're up here for four days, fishing and hunting and generally having a jolly good time. And a couple of bottles of whiskey and a few beers. Now we've got about five kilometers of flat water lake to paddle across till we hit our campsite. So we're just gonna barrel into it. <laughs> get some firewood, light a big fire, have a cup of tea, drink some more beer, shoot a deer, catch a fish, go to bed. In that order.
I won't tell so. Mm -hmm. This is what it's all about. Uh, it's a lovely morning up the Karamea. We had a good night last night. A few beers. A few whiskeys. Boys didn't shoot any deer. They saw a couple running away. And uh, quite a funny story. Henry actually caught a trout yesterday. <laughs> um, he didn't want to kill it because he didn't want to break its neck. We caught it out of the raft so we didn't have a rock to smack it on. He didn't want to break its neck because it wouldn't look any good on the fire for the photo. So what they did, they put it in the in the live bait tank which is the, the funnel running along the bottom of the outside of the raft. And then they, we got the camp and they pulled it out. It was still alive, um, still flapping quite vigorously. And they put it on the shore and they st still, someone forgot to knock it on the head. And we went down to get it for dinner and it was gone. So <laughs> we think the trout... Uh, somehow flapped its way back into the river so so far on this hunting and fishing adventure we've eaten no trout and shot no deer but we've seen probably eight or nine deer all up fair course several of those were from the chopper um, boys only saw two from the shore but it's early days yet we're going down to the ugly river um, after a massive 800 meter portage through the bush and hopefully we'll have some nice fresh deer heart for dinner hey boys <laughs> As you can see, not everyone's full of beans today. A few people are still in bed. What time is it? <laughs> Eight o'clock, Bay says Wecker from under the fly. I'm surprised he's still alive under there and hasn't been eaten to death by the mosquitoes. Oh, plan for today is to pack up camp. We're almost done. The boys have been pretty quick today, pretty on to it. It's a pleasure doing trips with these Kiwi fellas because everyone's just so on to it in the morning and get up and go, you don't have to crack the whip at all, so we're going to carry the boat, the gear down, whack it in the boats, we've got about half a kilometre paddle across the lake to get to the portage, and then it's an 800 metre carry through scrub and then bush, and we're going to deflate the rafts, roll the rafts up, and carry them through the forest. We tried this method last time, it worked quite well, but it only works if you've got a good team of heavy lifters, and today we've got a pretty bloody good team. The time is 10.20 in the morning, we'll just drag it straight up, straight up. portage has officially begun. 800 metres through scrub and native bush around a stomping crate 5 6 rapid full of sieves and death traps. Our way, look out! No time for videoing, the portage is happening. So I think the fastest time we've done this in is two and a half hours, so we're aiming to beat that record. Set a new record, just under two hours. See how it goes. I'm pretty confident we've got a pretty good team today. Everyone's in high spirits after smashing a bunch of double browns in Havana Club. We're prepped, fully prepped for the job at hand. Here we go, into it. Raft up front, how you doing Rob? Yeah, really good. Raft up the back, loaded to the nines. No place I'd rather be. I like here some mingy mingy berries. Not much flavour to them mingy mingy berries. All seed and no berries. Here's some more. Mmm. Full of dry unflavoured goodness. <laughs> Forgot to kick the brown clown out of the circus this morning. <laughs> All the moss is a bit dry for nature poos. Hopefully in this shady forest there'll be some nice moist moss. Didn't put this in the brochure did we? Pretty epic trip, eh? Stage two completed. Stage three and stage four to go. Then we're back on the river. Gained a bit of elevation now, we're about 80 metres above the river level. Alright, raft coming through. Whoa, grab that raft bro. Matt, Matt, oh you got it? <laughs> Sketchy. Whew. Oh, my hangovers definitely kicked in now. I had a bit of a spit back there. And hopefully I'll be right for the rest of the day. What do you reckon? Good mate, makes it all worthwhile eh? So uh, it's quite good being the cameraman, it definitely has its, its advantages like just being able to cruise along and video while everyone else does all the work. Doing a great job there boys, yeah, I think great job. <laughs> Last leg, stage four, the promised land. 
Uh, that's the lowest I've ever seen the Karamea at this point. She's really low. It's going to be scraping our way down today with a stiff uphill wind. So the work's not over yet. We've got about a, maybe two or three more hours of hard work on the water ahead of us. What's our time, Wecker? Quarter to one, bro. Whoa, so we didn't quite make our two and a half hour record. Two hours and 45 minutes. And the last piece of equipment, the last raft, is coming back down to water level. Bloody good job, guys. Good work. So there it is, just behind me, the roaring lion. Super low flow. As you can see, some of those rocks up there are the size of houses. There's a bit of perspective. So massive, massive big rocks. And the horizon line's about halfway up. There's another 500 meters on the other side of that horizon line, you can see. Full of massive big rocks, sieves, undercuts, and nasty stuff. At a higher flow, we run this bottom section here, but at these low flows, just there's no way to get a raft through. Too tricky. At the end of an epic day, we finally made it to the Ugly River. There's a few footprints on the beach which we don't really want to see. It means there's been fishermen up here just in a couple of days before us, but we should be able to catch a few fish. Thank God that day's over, that was an epic day <laughs> of epicness. Being a flighty little bugger, he won't take it, he's just selectively feeding, and uh, the nip's been dropped by him a couple of times, so we're going to change the classic hole here in Copper and see if that snags him. Hopefully, the nips that are in the river are pretty small, we don't have any real tiny nips. I might have some on my flight, get back and camp. My camera battery's running flat too, so I might run down to camp, which is only about 100 metres downstream, grab another battery and grab another box of flies. Beauty, so that's good, we're going to keep him for dinner. Not too big, good eating size. And I refused all the offerings, so I went back to camp and got one of the small pheasant tails that I had in my fly box, and bang, he took that one right off the bat. Same for little cats as they, pretty much everything. Uh, yep. Oh, nice. Oh, you got him? Sweet. That was lucky, eh? All the time, I'm a <laughs> nice. That was awesome. Easy come, easy go, eh? Oh, look, there's another pull up, isn't it? <laughs> The indicator was about two feet behind him. Oh, he might have spooked.
Yeah, so we are just heading back to camp now. Pretty exciting uh, bit of fishing on the corner there. But uh, time to go back and see the lads and I'll be ready for a bit of an aperitif. But by the looks of things, there's one more pool just down here. And since we went that way last time, I think we're going to have a look down here, so see if we can get another one for the pot. What happened there? Well, it was a bit of a disaster. I just went to uh, pick up the fish and slipped on a piece of moss and yeah, it was the end of my rod, so... Shit. Oh well. Shit happens. Yeah, shit happens. Rod for a fish, good trade. Yeah, exactly, hey. Almost an upwards. Bugger. Tonight's edition of Catch and Cook is proudly brought to you by Dobro, Double Brown, Captain Morgan Spice Rum, Havana Club Rickard Pasties. Shit could go downhill from here on in. <laughs> you know you're using a top quality sword Bowie knife there, Tom? Of course, mate. Yeah, it's going to smash through until they're dry and just like... A little bit of flesh gone to the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to cut, cut to the booty. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, this is the funny part. So we're going to eat those suckers tomorrow, they should be really delicious. We didn't get any of the real big ones, just the medium sized ones, which are the best eating. It's a little bit tricky to describe it, but there is literally hundreds of thousands of insects out here. The camera's not picking it up very well. Uh, stirring spoon. Off on another excellent adventure. This is day four of the five day adventure. The trout have been caught. Deer have been seen and not shot. We saw a stag running away from us last night. One of the boys went for a hunt this morning and spooked three deer. Uh, two of the boys are out bush hunting today. Hopefully gonna bring home the bacon and we are headed up river for the most epic day of fly fishing since the last epic day of fly fishing. We got Darren here on the fly rod behind me. He's not quite a, a fly fishing virgin. He's done a wee bit of flailing around there. And we got Tom and Matt up ahead of us. Well, there they are, out in the riverbed, looking for the goods. We're gonna push upstream quite a bit, try to get to some relatively unfished water. A lot of these trout are really spooky. I think they get fished to quite a lot. This river used to be relatively unknown and uh, due to the awesomeness of the fishing up here and fishing magazines plenty of articles have been written on the ugly river and uh, this river is now fished quite a lot but there's plenty of fish up here plenty of fish to go around and there's so many fish in the pools if you catch one spook the others chances are the following day you'll be able to catch one of the other ones we lost a monster yesterday he went deep, sat on the bottom for a while, then charged up to the top end of the pool, and uh, the knot came undone on the hook. It's an old, uh, an old parlungy trick, hold him upside down for a while, let him get his breath back. And off he goes to hide under the rock, fight another day. Good on you lads. Yeah. 
He's gonna bust off. Have you still got him? Is he still on? He's off. You sure? What a battle of epic proportions! <laughs> Tom had to swim all the way down, he was sinking, I hope I got that on camera. My DSLR was crapping out. He's quite a good sized fish, he might go six or seven pound if we're lucky. <laughs> How was that bro? Yeah, uh, she's pretty fucking uh, pretty dramatic. It's got a bit quiet here though. No, that line's still kind of straight, I think. Is he still on? I don't know. We don't know if he's still on, he's either sitting on the bottom. Or he's on a rock. I hope he's still on.